14 of the top 20 players and 18 of the 20 winners on the LPGA Tour. So our players have come here with great um, anticipation of um, being here in Malaysia. And we are focused at the LPGA on being a global leader in women's golf and in women's sports. And with that, using that platform, as I said before, to elevate power and um, advance opportunities for girls and women. We're really committed to that mission. And we know that Maybank is equally committed to that mission. We've been wildly impressed by Maybank's um, commitment to women in the workforce. Having 56% of their employees be women is, is truly remarkable. 33 members of the board of directors um, and being ranked on numerous publications as one of the most female-friendly companies in the world is, is quite remarkable to us and matches and aligns with our mission. So we're happy to answer any questions that you have. The LPGA is growing very aggressively. In the past two years, our purses have elevated from about 70 million in 2021 to over 108 million this year. And companies like Maybank, who see the importance of paying our players uh, commensurate with their talent, is really, really important. The major championships have increased 80% in the past two years, and the non-major championships close to 50%. So we see a very strong trajectory, and it is co companies and partners like Maybank who are committed not only to the purse, but also to the overall experience. I was just speaking with Kelly Tan, and she told she's a member of our board of directors, so a big part of our organization. It's great to be here in her home country. She said that the build looks just like it looked when the men played here, which is something that's really important to us, that the experience for the players and for the fans is elevated and shows the true commitment to the value of these athletes. So I'll turn it to Sean, but we're looking forward to answering any questions you have. We, we couldn't be more thrilled to be here this week and look forward to a fantastic opportunity to showcase the very best players in the world. Asians, uh, especially the Koreans, they've dominated the LPGA Tour for some time now. So do you see a similar a rising trend among Southeast Asian golfers? I think Thai golfers, um, about six of them have won on the LPJ tour now. So do you do you see like a rising you know trend among the Southeast Asian players? Because we, we are we're gonna have one of our aside from Kelly Tan, we are, we're gonna have Nat Natasha who's gonna be on tour next yes. year, next year. From the yeah. tour. Yeah. Yes. So um, just your opinion about that. Yeah I mean I think golf worldwide has um, the quality of play has elevated all over the world. Um, the diversity of our talent. We have players on the tour from 35 different countries. On the top 10, there are five countries represented in the top 10. Um, so it is a very diverse tour, a very global tour, and the talent is rising all over. It is certainly um, getting better in Southeast Asia. The Thai players are dominating in many areas and have uh, risen to the top of the Thai Tutukan Tutukul was uh, number one last year at the point, and obviously the Chitana Gardens and so many others have been fantastic players. Kelly Tan is on the move, and there's Natasha and many others from Southeast Asia. I think all throughout Asia, we know the Koreans have been extremely successful over the years and continue to be. Um, and uh, we have some top ten players from China, we have top ten players from Japan. And so we're just really excited about the competition. It is really hard to win out here. You are competing against the very best in the world, not from one co country, one region, from all over the world. And no other real professional sports tour can really say that. I and mean, we are truly a global tour, and we value that, um, and we really dig into that. So I think the talent is, is rising everywhere. And if you ask our players, they'll say that there's nothing like competing out here. So we're, we're really proud of that. In, in a lot of the sports, you have to wait every four years to, to have the best in the world to compete at the same stage. But at the LPGA, every week it's like an Olympic because you have the best players coming around the world to play here up every week on the LPGA Tour. Uh, you talked about Thailand and the commissioner alluded to uh, Thailand players, but when we first had our Thailand event, there were no Thai LPGA members. Having an event in your home country and really having the young girls, giving them an opportunity to come out and see the players play in person, having a role model, that's very critical. So I think having an event here in Malaysia and keeping it here for long term will go a long way in developing more players from Malaysia to compete in the global stage like at the LPGA. Yeah, and I think that's what we're trying to do all over the world is show young girls that they can do hard things and that they can be valued for the work that they do in whatever their chosen field is. Um, and so that's really important to us. And we've seen that over and over. 
role model, model models inspire strength and inspire confidence and uh, a willingness to try hard things, which is really important. And getting to the great golf course at KLGCC today, it's as good of a setup as we've had all year and uh, as, as good as we can do. Uh, when I first spoke with uh, our friends at Maybank from the very beginning, uh, their vision um, aligned very well with the LPGA about equity, you know, strength and equity, uh, inclusion, diversity. Um, that's really what the LPGA is defined. That's what we do. Um, having an event coming back here um, after a six-year hiatus, we've always been asked a lot of questions from the membership. When are we going back to Malaysia? Because their previous experience in this country, hospitality, food, and the great golf course here at KLGCC was a model and example of what the LPGA event should be uh, in Asia. So we're very happy to come back. And I know we've got a great competition, as Commissioner alluded to. We've got a great field this week. So hopefully they'll come out and uh, you know really display their strength and then have a lot of fans come out and cheer on their players. We're looking forward to that. In Korea, you have got all these uh, very good players. And in Malaysia, yes, we have had our programs here and all. But, um, you know, how do you think, uh, what can Malaysia do to emulate what is going on in Korea now, you know? What can we do to improve the quality of our women golfers here in Malaysia? Increase the purse. No, no, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. 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 I mean, I think it really does. That's why at the LPGA, you start with girls' golf. You know, sometimes it takes years to, to build that up, but you have to start with a very strong foundation of teaching young girls to play golf, showing them that they can do big things in the game, having great LPGA teaching professionals who understand what girls need and how they can best reach their peak performance. Um, and then, you know, marketing the players and, and, and being really committed to showcasing them as humans, them as, as golfers, and that just builds. It takes time, it doesn't happen overnight, but I think the commitment is really important um, in seeing that it does. You know, the other thing is golf and sports for girls, it's not just about winning on the golf course, but there are so many studies that show girls who play sports perform better in life in all aspects of life. They have stronger mental health, they do better in work, they have more successful relationships, they're generally just more um, successful in life. So it's really important to get young girls into sports and build their confidence and build their ability to do whatever it is they want, whether they want to go on and play professional golf or they just want to become the director of marketing of a gigantic bank. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, I think for Korea, a signature moment like Seri Park in 98 was very key. And that's made possible because Korea had already established a local tour, there were professional events, uh, more players are already playing in their local circuit. So I think those are all the different ingredients uh, on top of the infrastructures and different programs that Commissioner mentioned. We think that moment is coming and having an event like this where Kelly and Natasha and this LPGA professional from Malaysia are playing, but also having an opportunity for the young amateurs and exemptions, ASEAN exemptions and Malaysian players and, and part of this event, playing with the other LPGA player, being able to measure themselves against best in the world. Those are the step one, two, three that gets you to be able to play at the highest level. So having an event like this, I know I can continue to say the same thing, but this is a critical component of growing the game, having whether it's an LPGA event or PGA Tour on the men's side and having a little competitive local tours, those are all very important to, to have um, players that are at a global stage. It's not very often that you're in one place where the very best at anything in the world are in yes. one location, and that's inspiring. Yeah. So is, is, is this event the last of the Asian Swing? Uh, one more. We're playing in Japan uh, next week. Sports is just elevating across the world. I think people are seeing the talent of the female athletes in all sports and they're seeing that the competition and the entertainment if they're on at the right time if the setting is appropriate for the level of talent if there's a commitment from the television partners and from the sponsors to elevate the event people are interested the talent is so good the competition is so good and the world's mindset has shifted around that so i think that's number one golf has been incredibly popular you know, since the pandemic, but over the last several years, it's growing leaps and bounds. The number of women playing has been growing, the number of girls growing up playing. 
We're now at about 35% of the juniors playing golf in the U.S. Um, and, and around the world, that number is elevated as well. We're hoping to get 50% in every country. Um, so I do think because we're a global tour, there are still so many companies that see the value. It's a 400% return on investment to invest in the LPGA, a recent study showed. So you're getting significant um, commercial value from supporting the LPGA, but you're also having the opportunity to talk about your values, talking about things that you care about, talk about empowering women, talk about giving women opportunities that they haven't previously had. So those things coming together, a great commercial opportunity to build, and build, build your brand, but also to do things that match your company's ethos. And that's been really popular for us. I think also because we're a global tour, we have a lot of great brands and companies to work with. Um, and this is the highest purse on the Asian swing. So to get back to your question about why the players are playing here, I think that is critically important. I think the way that they feel they are treated and the environment that's created, that it feels big and it feels important, um, inspires the players to come to play. And it's getting towards the end of the season, yeah. so the competition is really tight. There are players that are playing to keep their car. Yeah. There are players that are playing to get into the, to the CME uh, Tour Championship. And so there's a lot at stake right now, and I think coming to a beautiful golf course like this is um, very appealing to us. Well, every day we work to elevate girls and women. I mean, our entire mission is to elevate girls and women, so it doesn't just stop and start in October. It's, sure. it's, it's the entire year. We have a, the LPGA is an organization that um, we say cradle to grave in women's golf or girls' golf. We have 600 girls' golf sites around the world. We have close to 2,000 LPGA teaching professionals um, in Asia and, and all over the world. We have 16,000 amateurs within our LPGA amateurs program. And every day we talk about the platform that we have to elevate girls and women through golf, but not just on the golf course, but off the golf course as well. So it is fully ingrained in our mission. That's who we are, that's what we do. And so every day we're working to do that. Well, we're currently playing seven events in six countries. Um, Malaysia is the newest addition to our schedule. Um, I think our friends at Maybank know that we have other countries and companies that want to host an LPG event sure. in their country. Unfortunately, we don't have enough dates in time today. Korea is certainly strong. Our, our LPG Asia office is headquartered in Korea, but it doesn't mean we're staying in Korea most of the time. We're traveling to China, Thailand. I think you know we've been in Malaysia four or five times this year. Um, Women's golf is, I think you know already, it's very popular in Asia, almost popular than our counterparts on the, the male side. So uh, we have a lot of interest. Uh, our goal is not just to play the events, but really figuring out ways to grow the game of golf, and particularly on the women's side, as Commissioner mentioned, through the Rose Golf and, and uh, LPG Professional and, and the various programs. So we will continue to do that. I think Malaysia right now, with, as Commissioner mentioned, you know, having the strongest part, you have the best players here. And moving forward, I think we need to continue to get stronger across the board in Asia and elevate the, the game and women's game and LPGA across the board.